Problem 9.1-1. A beam is to be made of steel that has an allowable bending stress of sigma allowable equal to 24 ksi and an allowable shear stress of tau allowable equal to 14.5 ksi. Select the lightest W shape that will carry the loading shown. Here's a beam with dimensions. It's pin supported at this end, a roller here in the middle with a cantilever end, and two point loads. Let's do this problem. Okay, the first thing that I've done is draw a free body diagram to solve for my support reactions. And I'm going to begin by summing the moments about point B. And when I do that, I get a value of uh, for AY equal to negative 6.07 kips. That means uh, the reaction force at AY is actually pointing down. And then summing the forces in the y direction, I can solve for the reaction force BY, and that is 46.07 kips. So now that I've got my reactions, I have all my external forces. I'm going to draw my shear diagram. OK, I've drawn my shear diagram. You can see here at uh, the left end, we uh, at that reaction, we drop down immediately to negative 6.07 kips. We stay constant until we get to our 15 kip load that knocks us down 15 more kips to negative 21.07. We stay constant then to our re uh, reaction force at uh, the roller where we have a 46.07 kip positive force that bumps us up to positive 25 kips. We stay constant until we get to the end of the beam where we have a 25 kip force that knocks us back down to zero. Now the next step is to draw our moment diagram. For a moment diagram, we're going to start at uh, the left end and it'll be zero there where our pin support is. And uh, at eight feet over, we're going to uh, find that our moment is uh, equal to the area under our shear diagram here, which is calculated here at the side. We'll end up at negative 48.56 kip feet. For the next section of our moment diagram from 8 feet uh, over to 14 feet, we're going to have again a linear slope because our shear diagram is constant and the slope is going to be a negative 21.07 and we can find the area under this portion of the shear diagram, that's equal to negative 26.42 kip feet. So we're going to drop an additional 126.42 kip feet. We're going to end up at about a negative 175 kip feet. For the last portion of our moment diagram, the last seven feet, we're going to have a positive slope, 25, and the area under our shear diagram there in this last uh, rectangle here is going to be 175 kip feet. That's going to take us back to zero. So looking at our shear diagram, our maximum shear is 25 kips. Looking at the moment diagram, our maximum moment is negative 175 kip feet. And these two values are going to control our design. In this problem, we are asked to select the lightest W shape that will work. So uh, we're going to need to first find our section modulus. That'll be our required section modulus. Our section modulus is equal to our maximum moment divided by our allowable stress and we calculated the maximum moment to be negative 175 kip feet. I'm just going to take the magnitude 175 kip feet because we always look for section modulus as a uh, positive value. So 175 kip feet, multiply it by 12 inches per feet to get this unit into uh, kip inches. That's so that we can divide it by our allowable stress which was given in the problem statement here to be 24 ksi. So that will allow our units to work out to inches cubed. So 87.5 inches cubed is our section modulus. Now let's go to the, sec the section tables. So I have here a uh, table of wide flange sections. And it turns out there are lots of sections that will work for our beam. But there's only one that's going to be the lightest section. And we're going to use our section modulus to find uh, the sections that will work. We had a section modulus of 87.5 inches cubed that's required. So what we need to do is choose a, uh, a wide flange beam section that has a section modulus about the xx axis that is greater than 87.5. And I've shown here in this red rectangle, all of these, cr all of these sections here have a section modulus bigger than 87.5. All of the sections in this block will work. But also uh, here in the uh, there's a W16 section that also has a uh, an S value greater than 87.5 so it's an option too. In fact going further down my table there's a W12 section 
that will work and a W10 section that will work. So those are all options that I have from this table. And uh, now how do I pick the lightest section? Well, I have to look at this number here. This gives the weight in pounds per foot. And so if I want to choose the lightest section, what I'm going to do is look at uh, each of these designations. That for the W24s, it looks like uh, the lightest section I can find is a 55 pound per foot section. In my W18s, the lightest that will work is the here, a 50. So that that's currently my lightest section. If I look, go to my W16s, well, that's going to weigh 57 pounds per foot, so that weighs more. So the W18 by 50 is still the best choice. Looking over here at the rest of the table, a W12 section, that weighs 87 pounds. A W10 weighs 100 pounds, so the, the weight's going up. So it looks like my W18 by 50 is going to be my choice. It is the lightest section. And we're going to need to get two values off this table. The depth, which is 17.99 inches, and here the web thickness, 0.355. We need these to uh, calculate our shear stress. Okay, so our lightest shape that we found was a W18 by 50. It had a section modulus of 88.9, which is bigger than 87.5. That means it, means it is good for bending. It's not go we're not going to s exceed our allowable stress with the section modulus. And we found that a W18 by 50 has a depth of 17.99 inches. The depth is shown here in this diagram. A W shape has an I shape cross section. It's, it's called a W shape because it's a wide flange. These are the flanges here. The the uh, the horizontal elements at the top and bottom, and the we need the web thickness, and that's because we need the next step is to check our shear stress in the beam and, and make sure that it is not uh, exceeding the allowable shear stress. To check shear, we will calculate the maximum shear stress in the cross section, and we're going to use this equation here, which will take the shear force, V, divided by the area of the web. This is the equation that we'll use for uh, I shapes or wide flange sections. And we'll use for V the maximum shear force, which we found to be 25 kips. And the area of the web is the area I've shown here in red on the cross section. That's equal to the depth, 17.99 inches, times the web thickness. 0.355 inches. And we get a value for maximum shear stress equal to 3.91 KSI. And in the problem statement, we were given an allowable shear stress of 14.5 KSI. And since our shear stress is less than the allowable shear stress, uh, we're good. Now suppose we calculated our maximum shear stress and found that it was greater than our allowable shear stress. In that case, we would need to select another cross section one with a section that still met the uh, the required section modulus conditions but then also had adequate web area to have a low enough shear stress uh, that it did not exceed the allowable but in this case we're fine so we will use a w18 by 50 wide flange section and we're done